Hi, welcome to the White Noise Studio. I'm Marlon. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I mixed a thrash metal song. Uh, the song is by Cannibalistic Squirrel. It's called Verkop Mannetje. It's sung in Dutch and has an old school Metallica vibe going on. <laughs> So this episode is about the breakdown of a thrash metal mix by the band Cannibalistic Squirrel. Um, it's a local band and here is some footage of the EP release they did in the great CD and vinyl store Wim's Musikkelder in Doetinchem. <laughs> Thanks to Paul van Druten for letting me use his footage. The song Verkoop Mannetje is one of five songs recorded by the band here in the studio for their first EP. Uh, it was actually the first time the band recorded something and it was, if I'm correct, the first time uh, almost every band member ever did a studio recording. Um, so I used a studio setup which I use quite uh, often and which is liked by quite a few bands, which is to record all band members together in the same room. Um, I do a few overdubs later, uh, like the vocals to have no bleed in a vocal microphone. Uh, and of course, I do also a lot of sessions where musicians only overdub onto each other, but that's for a different video. Let's cut to the mixing desk. So here we have the actual mixing project in Cubase. I have imported a few tracks of the original recording uh, session uh, to show you how it sounds before and after. But first, a little part of the track. So it really has an old school vibe going on. Um, if you want to hear more of the track, uh, I will put a link in the description below um, to the EP on Bandcamp. So you can check it out and buy it. Let's start out with drums. Here are the drums. It sounds like this in solo. I will give you a few examples of what I did in this mix. Together they sound like this. And I will explain exactly what is what. Kick 1 is the outside Yamaha subkick, uh, which is a microphone which only records low end. Um, I have rolled off some of the high end for that one, because I only want to have the low end. And I gated it. The kick in microphone uh, has a bit of more attack added to it and a bit of low end. And it's also gated. These two are gated uh, and triggered by the kick trigger track. Um, I find when I use a trigger track, which is actually uh, one of those two tracks uh, made into triggers, um, it sounds more clean while gating. So this track, the kick trigger track, is triggering the gates. Sounds more tight. Um, these two tracks are then sent to the kick original and that one is going to the WA279. It's actually called WA273 to be correct and the DBX168. So it goes into a analog channel strip uh, which I add low end and do some stuff and then it goes into the DBX compressor and together it sounds like this and as you can see I did some extra gating and limiting to keep the transients constant a bit more compressing and even more EQing reduce a little bit of low end and a bit around the bass guitar area to get this sound it sounds really thick now. Um, and I did something similar with the snare, only I added a snare sample. 
as you can hear. The sample also triggers a gate on the original snare. Um, then I also uh, send it to the uh, WAM Audio WA273 and the DBX160 a And that gives this sound. As you can hear, I've added the reverb. Um, the reverb is this one. I started out with a uh, Fab Filter Pro Arp, but I swapped it for the uh, Eventide Stereo Room in setting Vintage Stereo Room because it sounded, uh, well, it gave a real cool old school vibe, which I wanted. And actually, uh, the old school vibe is mostly coming from this reverb plugin. A really cool plugin, the SP216 2016 plugin. Um, let's go to the tom toms. I usually clean up the toms because I don't want uh, any of the resonance of the tom toms in a metal mix uh, because it ca can get a bit distracting. Uh, as you can see, I thought I have done it over here, and then it's gone. Uh, I usually do the same with hi hat and ride in uh, louder mixes. As you can see, the height is also cleaned up, and the right symbol when used is also cleaned up. I find when I clean up the right and high hat, uh, I don't get weird bleed of crash symbols in those microphones. Here are the overheads, and usually I do EQing for every microphone. There's a resonance over here, and the other one's even more extreme. See, roll off and some dips. And then it goes to the bus and it says here BSS DPR 402 uh, is also a analog compressor. And then it sounds like this. Next up is bass guitar. There were quite a few things going on with bass guitar. Um, we recorded the bass guitar with DI during the uh, initial recording and then we came back in to do some fixes and we plugged it in in the warm audio uh, channel strip and we found that it sounded better. So in the end we actually redid the entire bass because it sounded better. Um, and that is this recording. It was acute because it had a lot of high end. It got some compression. And some distortion. The reason why it looks so extreme is because the entire bass is reamped. As you can see over here, Yamaha subkick distorted and subkick minus 12. Um, I used a little, uh, put a video over here, a little uh, crate guitar amp to reamp the bass. Uh, I put a Yamaha subkick behind and a Neumann TLM 103 in front and we use those to uh, reamp the bass guitar. So the subkick sounds like this. Low end. The TLM 103 sounds like this. And I duplicated the subkick and uh, transposed it down uh, an octave which really uh, provides some really low end together. And together it sounds like this. And that is what you hear in the mix. Let's go to guitars. Guitars in solo mixed sound like this. That's the guitars, uh, the mixed and bounced. Uh, I did, did a few things with it. I put it through the uh, DBX 166 compressor and some EQ. Uh, the original guitars, I will take one as an example, uh, is recorded with two microphones. In this case, it was a, a SM57 and a Röde NT5. And I blended them together and routed it to its own uh, group 
there's some EQ, there's probably a, a, a resonance happening in the guitar speaker. And I did the same for the other guitar. There were two guitars. Sounds like this. It actually says mode 4 because uh, my uh, mode 4 top and uh, speaker cabinet were used for this recording. And as you can see, if you go below, I put this group, guitar 1 and guitar 2, also through the Warm Audio 273 EQ. Uh, and I did some additional EQ in this one. No, I did not. Okay. And that was actually then sent through the DBX-166 uh, to create the, the guitar's bus after I was totally happy with the sound. And next up is um, vocals. Uh, we recorded the vocals here in the live room with the sound coming through the speakers and a microphone in the back. Um, we pushed the channel strip a little bit to add a little bit of distortion. And it sounds like this. Lead vocals. And I used two compressors on this one, the uh, JBL 7110, which is a URI, uh, URI uh, 10 remake, um, rebranding actually to be correct, and then through a DBX 160A. Um, you can still see it over here, it's over here. Those ex exclamation marks means it's a missing plugin because I have not uh, inserted them right now. A uh, little bit of EQ happening, high end boost, um, and then it went through a bit of distortion. I used that as a sort of compressor and also to bring out some parts of the vocal, like the body and stuff like that. What I also did to bring out a bit more of the body is I transposed the original vocal uh, an octave down and added that in. It sounds like this. It sounds like a, like a cookie monster. But together it really brings out the body in a vocal. Uh, and also there is a reverb happening on the vocal. It's again the Eventide SP2016. Uh, stereo room setting vintage so we have uh, that reverb on snare drum vocals and guitar solo at least to bring out a bit of the old school vibe uh, and it sounds altogether sounds like this and if you put it all together back in the the mix um it sounds kind of like this so that was the thrash metal mix of cannibalistic squirrel uh, i hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe share and like this channel and i'll see you next time bye